Got it. All right. Um, hey, Drew. Hey. <laughs> um, so what I wanted to do in this, uh, this is, so I'm not calling this an interview. This is more of a guest lesson, like the one that I did. So I did one of these with a Will Van Horn that was like a C6 for beginners lesson, basically. And this is um, this is going to be, uh, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm thinking of this as basically like a guitar player's perspective on E9 and like what, how you can think of it when you're kind of just getting started. Now, most of the people on this page, Patreon are already kind of started, but there are definitely people who are who join and who get on here who who like um, who are who are really just getting into it. So, and I don't have a lot of lessons that are like that are really beginner lessons. Um, so, I thought because so I'm sort of sorry, I'm just kind of rambling through this, but. Um, you, my friend Drew Taubenfeld, um, have done video lessons on this before, and I know you've taught a number of steel players and ha like helped them get started. So I thought you'd be a good person to ask. Great, yeah, exactly what you're saying. I think we, you know, any any time I play out, usually there's a lot of guitar players that oh, I love the sound of that instrument. I wanted mm -hmm. to learn, but there's always but, you know, it's too yeah, awful, too crazy. And I think you know it's a very doable thing it's hard steel is hard it's a journey but i just we yeah we wanted to me and rich wanted to provide like hopefully a, a lesson that would speak to that person who's like a guitarist or you know you you really want to get into this and you don't really know where to start and kind of just trying to show you how to make sense of this thing your first couple of days or weeks of playing it yeah that's great um all right well let's get started um so tell me where where do you start um well, first, as I'm sure a lot of people notice, if you strum the thing, it's like, it's like, this, it's a crazy, doesn't make much sense. To, to yeah. People. So honestly, what, what I, what, what I do is, is, is if you play guitar already, like the first thing I like to do is, is like, well, what's something you already, already know? And, um, the, the B and the E string, the high B and high E, you can already play music on that, you know, if you're a guitar player. You know, yeah. Whatever. And the one thing I like to do is start just for fun on the steel. Those two strings exist already, right yeah. next to each other. So you have an E, which is the fourth string, and a B, the fifth string. So I kind of encourage people to just find those, which is four and five, and and pick up your bar and just kind of like, well, all right, I know. You know, just start to make some music. Like it's it's there. You know, you can. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and um, and you you know, it doesn't have to be blue. You could play it in nursery rhyme. Right? You know, like uh. I yeah. Think it's, really, it's a really good thing, like. You know, I'm a big fan of like pause the video and explore. So like if you're you're just sitting down, like I would even encourage you to like pause and and then just explore some melodies that you already play on guitar that you already could sing. Sure. And at first it might sound like you know, just kinda of start to find where those things fit your ear and, and, and have a, a good time, you know. Yeah. Like, you already know some music on this. That that's kind of that that's a good place to just like explore for a second, you know. That's really interesting. You know, I I I've talked before on here about how the um you know, the open the no pedals position is essentially like you know, you it's equivalent to essentially like an E shape bar chord, right? Kind of go up yes. and like and the pedals down position is kind of like an A shape in a sense. But I have never really thought about just those individual strings like literally being exactly the same. I mean, I've never thought about teaching it that way, where it's like uh, the same. It is not any different. So you've got like 
E, first fret, second fret, third fret. You know, you could do like sort of like baby guitar exercises on it. And like you, all the stuff is, all the notes are actually there. Exactly. And like that, take that same melody that I play, you know, Twinkle Little Star. Move it up to F. Yeah. You know, you can, yeah, there's music that you already know. And it's, right. I, if you bought an instrument and you're excited about it, you might as well start by playing something that's exciting, you know, that you know. And, yeah. yeah. Have, a, have a good afternoon. You don't even have to watch the rest of this for a while. Just go, yeah. go have a party with your steel oh. guitar and those two strings. Yeah, go to town. <laughs> go to town. Yeah, exactly. That's kind of a good... And then I start to teach about the grips. You know, that's a good that's a good next step, I think, for some people. All right, well, so talk about that for me. It's just kind of starting to develop a framework for... Because if you play this thing, like we talked about, it's kind of random pitch-wise. But there are um, triads that, 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 that fall on this. So a really good first step is to just teach your hands, like, very you know very get a very ingrained sense of where these are so if you play the 10th string the 8th string and the 6th string that's an e chord right so you know it's not you're not messing with any of these other ones in between so and then if you play 8 6 and 5 that's another e chord mm -hmm. so 10 8 6 Eight six five, and then you skip seven. You go six five four. That's and then five four three. So those are the places that, like, if you didn't want to mess with the other strings, honestly, the first week I played guitar with steel, my brother was like, "What the hell are you are you doing there?" But it was just literally. teaching your hands where these yeah. are. So that is another kind of like, like pause the video, you know, like if I could give you the, the first week of steel guitar, it could be like making music with those two strings that you enjoy and, and, and teaching your, your hands where these are. Cause this is going to be a huge foundation for playing fluidly is not having to think about where to grab these. Yeah, absolutely. I can't stress that enough of like every day. Again, if, you, if your roommate or your brother or your wife or husband or mom is not kind of like, what the hell are you doing in there? Then you might not be doing this enough, you know? Yeah. Because it's really, and you know, that what I'm doing is, is uh, you play it and then, you know, I'm muting with this side of my finger. You know, you, you drop your palm back on it. Right. And try to get a clean, clean start. So that's like, I can't, yeah, I can't say how important that, and you don't have to, you can, you can have right. fun, you know? So yeah, let me, let me go over that one more time, just so people are like, I mean, I think again i think a lot of my students know that but i i know that i have people sign up for this who are who are pretty new so i want to sort of like like make sure this stuff is kind of set in stone so we got 10 8 6 8 6 5 6 so this is string numbers with the lowest string being the 10th string so the string closest to your body being just like on the guitar it's the sixth string is the one closest to your face you know it's the same thing 10 8 6 8 6 5 Six five four, five four three, and so those are just inversions of a triad. And as you go along learning, it's it's kind of essential to practice. And I've to be honest, I've gone through periods in my life where it's like if I'm really rusty, like or if I just haven't played, if I've been on tour or whatever, and just playing guitar, I'll just be like. And sometimes if I haven't done it for a while, it's like, oh, I'm kind of missing them. Like, yeah. it totally happens. Like, it is like a, it is not the easiest thing in the world to do. And and another thing you can do, which I'm sure you can get to, is you can just start to put the bar down and play through these grips. Just like over each individual fret, right? So just like. So 
See, I'm missing it. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> exactly. And, um. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, so keep going, Drew. Yeah. Keep, that's I mean, if, if you have if you have a, a thing you want to talk about next, let me know. But I, exactly what you said is kind of what I think of as like a next step is, is understanding the relationship of what you know how to make bar chords. Mm -hmm. This is an E shape. So we take an E shape. You know, if you scoot it up, you know you have that. That is what we're dealing with with the the pedal steel with the with no pedals. You know, you have. Mm -hmm. This is an E chord, just like that. If I want to make an F, you put the bar on the first fret. Yeah. An F sharp. So kind of like, you know, develop a visual framework where like if you're on the fifth, you want a fifth fret bar chord, you know that's an A chord. So kind of, you could explore, oh, that's a fifth fret open thing on the, on the mm -hmm. pedal. So, you know, I could say two things about that. It's nice to early on, we, this low 10th string is, is a B, and then the 8th string is an E. So the E is, is string in this position is where the root are based off of. So it's just good to understand, instead of playing random grips, it's kind of the second grip on the starting on the 8th string. That's where the root is. So if you were doing like a folk finger picking, the, the fifth is below, you know. Right. It's just good to know, I, I think, that, that here is home. Yeah. It's a it's a root position triad. It's, it's one, position. three, and five. Exactly. So, you know, start to play some of your favorite chord. I'm on a G right now, which is the third fret. So if you want to do one, C, G. Yeah. You know, you're going up here, finding that the C is here. You know, on the eighth fret, and you know, you can you can figure all these things out if you play guitar. And I'm a, I'm a big fan of not necessarily even over explaining it, like kind of letting you explore. Like, take your guitar neck, take the bar chord shape, look around, and find things. You're in G. You want to go to C. Yeah. G, then fine, you can find D. You know, I can tell you it's on the 10th fret, but I bet y'all can, like, the process of figuring that out is mm -hmm. really well. And then you, you know, it's funny, this, I was just thinking about this morning, like, even with, you can do this with one, four, five, with easy chords, but I was doing it, like, with sitting on the dock of the bay is a good one to kind of just explore some, you know. Yeah. So this is like G, B major, C major, A major. So you kind of third fret, seventh fret, eighth fret, down to the fifth fret. That's great. That's a great example. So and let, yeah. can I can I say one more thing on top of that? So oh. once you've got that root position, you can do that same. One thing that's cool about the steel, and you maybe you're gonna say this, but one uh, thing that's really great about the steel is like having all those grips. You can do the same thing on any of them. So you can like, if you want to play like the chords to sitting on the dock of the bay, like we just did it on eight six five. Well, what if you want to do it on? Uh, uh, Sorry, six five four. I mean, it sounds like music pretty fast, you know. Like, and I'm not doing anything with my feet. I'm just taking a grip, and I'm using the sort of like bar chord E position, and like m making music out of it. That's awesome, Drew. That's a really great example. Yeah, you know, right now we're just talking about major chords. So, you know, if there's any songs you know that have major chords that move around, learn them on the pedal steel. And you can, there's a lot, you know, that you could think of that exercise as ending there, but you can play that song like that, or you can play, like, have fun, you know, or you can play. 
way. And I'm just taking these grips and just arpeggiating them. Yeah. So there's a lot. Okay, this is another like pause video explore. Have a fun afternoon just arpeggiating some of your favorite songs. And this is just teaching you the steel neck. You know, the yeah. time you, every minute you spend, like, ah, crap, that's a B flat. Well, you know, you're just building your foundation for playing this instrument with, with other people. You know? Yeah. So, and it's going to be out of tune and it's going to be weird and like just kind of all of that is good. You'll explore because the first time you play it, it might sound like this. Oh, oh. You know, just go through all of that and then you find, oh, the B is actually up here. Kind of your eyes and your ears, you start to develop a, a visual understanding of like, where is the third fret that sounds like a G? You could use a tuner, you can, you know, you can see where these are, but you just explore and the intonation starts to like come. So, yeah. You know. Yeah, I do know. <laughs> still, me and Rich are still working. Still coming, yeah, <laughs> on, its, on its way. I hope any any day now. <laughs> oh my god! If we go to a mental institution, you'll know why. I know. Yeah, we've like just been hauled off somewhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um. Okay, so what's do you have a next phase after that? Yeah, you know, it's um starting to explore what these pedals do. You know. And, um, so you have this chord, which now we know any of these grips will make it there. So you have an E chord and you have three pedals on the floor. Mm -hmm. So the first one, what does it do? Um, it takes the, so an E is an E, G sharp and, and B or root third fifth. Mm -hmm. So the first pedal takes the B up a whole step to C sharp or the fifth to the sixth. Mm -hmm. um, the second pedal, I mean, here, just try that for, you know, like mm -hmm. just even just that one string. It's good to know which string. A lot of people learn, they just hit grips and then hit the pedal. I think it's really good to know which string is actually moving, you know? Yeah, that's a very good point. Below is the 10th string and the 5th uh, uh, string. Yeah. Are moving up a hole. So that's, you know, do, do your thing. Any fret. Just try to get... You have control over how fast you want it. Yeah, I, I should make one technical note here, which is like, you can't see our feet right now because we just haven't uh, currently set up the te technology to do that. <laughs> the advanced technology we would have needed to do that. But I think one one thing you need to know here is that you want to try to use the side of your foot to play the, to play the A pedal. So it's like, you don't want to use like your whole foot, like you're playing like, pressing like a brake pedal or something on the, in the car like you want to use like essentially the outside edge if this is your foot you want to yeah. use the outside edge of the foot to play the a pedal and it does take some getting used to it's basically like a roll rolling your ankle there you go thank you drew i appreciate yeah. it so yeah. yeah let's do that right now yeah you kind of like i have not even wearing shoes so which i play with i like playing barefoot a lot yeah a lot of people do that so um you know you, you, you it's kind of, your 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 think of your your the, the the ball of your foot is kind of an anchor, mm -hmm. and, and you kind of set I kind of set it up like between the third the second and third pedal, but but you're not like straight on to this pedal like that. You're this way, so you can do both the A and B at the same time very comfortably. Yeah, that's like where you want to start. And then yeah, like Rich said, you kind of roll sideways. Can you see that? Okay, is that? Yeah, that's great. Actually, that's a good illustration. So you, what you want to be able to do is push them both down easily and then you roll to the left and it's just the A pedal, or just, you know, just the first pedal. Yeah. The A pedal. And then you want to be able to roll to the right 
and it's just the B pedal. So if you're, the ball of your foot isn't in a good position to do that, you're going to be in trouble. And, you know, you really want that kind of sideways thing. So yeah. So you can sit with this and just kind of test, you know, uh, if you play the fifth string, but play the fourth string, and, or play the, uh, sorry, the, the uh, sixth string and make sure it's not moving. And then you play the, that will move the uh, sixth string, and then you make sure the fifth string is not moving. Um, hopefully awesome. Hopefully I didn't go over that too fast. Uh, I'm not sure. No, I think I think that's right. So let's go let's go back up and go over what the B pedal does here. Now that I just wanted the sort of technical note sure. of just like, yeah, that's good. I can see that now. Great. Uh, the B pedal takes this G sharp, which is the third of the chord, and moves it up half step. So it just like creates a s suspended chord, basically an E sus or, and that is on the sixth string. And the third string, you know, beautiful sound. Yeah. So if you have a chord or the A pedal, pretty cool. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. And that sus thing sounds really good when you get the bar. So right now, that's just you. Um, that's you up on on the fifth fret, I guess. That's where that was. Yeah. Sorry. Oh yeah. We're... The eighth. Oh, eighth fret, right? The perspective is so funny. Is going up to the eighth fret with the bar and just playing one of the grips. In this case, it's a eight six five. Um, so eighth fret. So that's like a C, right? Yeah. Uh, eight, just like the eighth fret on the guitar. So, one, and then just playing yeah. the B pedal. Kind of that. You know. Yep, exactly. Yeah. And then again, the other one was playing the A pedal. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Please continue. So yeah, that's just like a good place to just get used to and, and, and you can move on to the video, but if you're new, I mean, I would just even pause and just kind of explore that for 10 minutes, for two days, whatever you need to kind of feel comfortable. That foot position thing might take you a little time. Yes. You know, so you don't need to, because this is, the, we're going to give you a lot to digest, so you don't necessarily need, you can stay there for a little bit and, and, and experiment. But, um... So I want to start talking about like what these moves do to the chords and how to how to start to make music and follow chords. So um, I think a good thing is is to think about is pushing both of these pedals at the same time. And what that's going to do is we have an E, G sharp, D, and it's going to take the G sharp up to an A. And it's going to take the B up to a C sharp. And you might, some of you can hear this. It basically turns the E chord into an, an A chord. The four chord, the one chord into a four chord. Right. So essentially we have this. It turns it into this. This, this bar chord shape. So kind of same thing. You know, you if you put both pedals down, the guitar neck turns into these bar chords. So you want to B flat or C, you both pedals down, first fret, mm -hmm. B flat, B, second fret. You know, you want a D chord, that's the fifth fret, your first finger's on the fifth fret. So you go to the fifth fret with both pedals down. Yes, exactly. So another way to explore the neck, but another way to think about this is it just turns whatever chord you have into the four chord. You know, so if you're in G, this is the four with both pedals down. Yep. So any, like Rich mentioned, any grip, and that's pretty fun. You know, I mean, yeah. 
encourage anyone to kind of just. I mean, that's the that's why this instrument's so cool. I mean, that's what it is. It is like literally the pedal steel, basically, right there. And and so, I mean, I do encourage everyone to just take a lot of time exploring that. Just playing the grips and playing the A and B pedals and experiment with trying to play both pedals at the same exactly the same time. Or kind of you can kind of roll, just mess around. Don't worry about the details, just like just make it go to this and then try to release it. And you could go again, you can go slow. Or you can go fast. Right? You're just trying to like find the sort of nuance in your feet while you, while you, uh, uh, while you explore. You're just like expo exploring the space, essentially. Exactly. And, and it's fun. Yeah, it's pretty fun, I think. Yeah. That's you develop your own sound right away from how you choose. Exactly like Rich said, you know. That I just press the B pedal down and you delay the A. That, you know that's that's very different than you know yeah so but there's a lot to be explored there it's cool and again so we're talking about this yeah you know, like anywhere you see an f we're gonna go to the eighth fret Pedal steel is a grunge rock instrument. You know? Yeah, it's it's really just perfect for that. <laughs> what a sound! Yeah, it's great. Um, yeah, so not, so we're talking about one and four. So we're in G. Uh, going back to G. G C. If you want to get a five chord, you move it up two frets, right? So so can anybody guess what we're gonna do? You get the one chord, which is no pedals. This shape, which you put the pedals down. So if you want to get up to the five, you just, you know, here's one on the third fret, mm -hmm. push the pedals down. If you want to go to the five chord, you put it up two frets. Four, and then release the pedals. So that's just a shape that exists anywhere on the pedal steel. You know, if you go to A, which is the fifth fret, one chord, four chord pedals down, five chord. Yeah. So, you know, and you can arpeggiate. You can make music with this. That's a fun thing to, to do, I think. Yeah. Um, another way to get the, the four chord is to just move up the appropriate amount of frets. You got a G. Yep. Yeah. So you can, I'd also do that. G, move up to the eighth fret. C, D. You know, one, four, five is going to be a lot uh, of music. You're, if you're learning pedal steel, I think you're going to run into that a lot. Yeah, it's like the main the main thing that you're going to do in the beginning is just find one, four, five in a whole bunch of different places. Yeah, and you know, put on some put on some records. You know, there's the Neil Young songs, there's Bob Dylan songs, and you can probably play along immediately. Um, you know, and if you hear a minor chord, you can you can skip it, or you can you know try to use your ear and see if you play a single note that works but you know i'd encourage you just try some some songs that you know are just kind of one four i'm trying to think i can't think of a single one four five song i mean there are i think bob dylan and neil young are, are sort of like i mean there's there's a lot of bob dylan songs that are one just one four five, one, four, five. and and then i think the other thing is like that you can play over country songs i mean you won't be able to play all of the licks necessarily but you could play along with like a merle haggard record or like you know, and just find, or like a George Jones record or whatever, and just find the chords, you know, like you don't have to play anything on them. 
just try to just try to find them and like there's something very satisfying and fun about that about just like locking in with the record and being like oh this is a here's a like a sort of connection between the recording and like what you're doing a hundred percent merle haggard's great yeah swinging doors you know the, the bottle let me down yeah so they're slow moving to just yeah along with them and then you're going to start to find well where is an a you're going to, your intonation is going to improve and your knowledge of the neck just put the records on it and be with it yeah yeah that's We're great a great next step um one other quick note about this you know i'm i'm saying that this this um putting the pedal down turns it into a four chord you know, and it's it's sort of accurate, but basically all it's doing is it's moving the chord up a fourth. Mm -hmm. You know, so a G turns into a C. So you know, you can look at that from the other way. If I want to, if I'm on the five chord, which is a D, and I want to turn that up a fourth, that's going to get you back to the one chord. You know? Yeah. So when you're doing this, and you go to a a D up here with no pedals, it's important to be in the no pedal. D position. Yeah, on the tenth fret, right? On the tenth fret, I'm on now a five chord because I'm playing in G. So mm -hmm. here's G on the third fret up to the tenth fret. If I push the pedals down, it goes back to the one chord, which is a G. Yeah. So that's like a very essential. You'll hear that all the time. If I'm playing the one chord with the pedals down. Yeah, playing fragments. I mean, you you guys can learn this stuff down the road, but it's really just uh, that's a really good. I would ex explore that in, in a different key. Let's go to uh, F. So first fret is that pedals down, turns into a B flat, which is a four chord. Two frets up, it's a C five chord. Pedals off, back to the first fret. And then the other way, which is up to B flat, which is the sixth fret, up to D, five chord. And now we're in the five chord with no pedals, so we push the pedals back to F. Yeah. So I, you know, maybe explore that in a couple keys and get that familiar. Some good, another good pause time to pause the video. And yeah. You got any interjections, my friend? I don't know. I I'm, I'm I feel like that's actually really good. That's such a good start for people. I mean, I think as you go along, you can start treating that pedals down thing. The kind of next step is to treat like that sort of pedals down position as like essentially instead of thinking of that as the four chord, you can think of that. I mean, it's kind of what you're talking about before, but you can think of that as the one chord. So. This is this is maybe the last thing we should talk about because I don't want it to go too too long or we'll just go through the entire like every which we could do actually and maybe we need to do a follow up at some point. Um, get those minor chords in there. So. Yeah, get the minor chords in there and stuff. But just to finish the sort of one four five major, this is the structure idea. Is like we've got with our pet with the pedals down. We've got we were saying that that is essentially like, you know, you can look at it uh, as the same as like the A position bar chord on um, on a guitar. So, right, so if we have no pedals and we're in open and we're playing one of these grips, I'm gonna play eight, six, five, that's kind of our home base here, um, then that's A, right? And that doesn't have to be just the four chord of E, that can also just be the one chord. So actually, let me move it up. I'm gonna play it at C. So that's the third fret. Um, I can move that up uh, the normal way. Just keep the pedals down and move it up a fourth. So move it up to F here on the eighth fret. So that, again, pedals down. I'm, my feet are just like my the my heel is down. My feet. I don't know. If, I don't think I worked this out very well. Oh yeah, actually maybe. Can you see that? I don't know. Yeah, my foot. Here's my foot. It's all the way down, sort of. Um, so it's all the way down. It's it's like blocking. It's on both pedals, and they're all the way as far down as they can go. Okay, so now I'm in the eighth fret. Then you can go up two frets from there. And that can go to the tenth fret, and that's a G. So that's one, four, five. 
Now, when it starts to get kind of deep is when you start just mixing and matching these two different things. So here's C on this third fret. Well, we kind of know where F is, right? Like closer to here. So instead of being all the way up here, F could also just be no pedals on the first fret because that's like our E posi position bar chord. Yeah, exactly. The, the guitar illustration is really helpful. So it's like here's C on the third fret and here's F. And here's G, two frets above the F. And then you put the pedals down again, you're back to one. So right there, there's a few different ways to just play one, four, five really close to each other in ways that, you know, and like there's a lot of music to be made from that, especially once you start combining the grips and kind of like, you know, mashing into the pedals, you know. You know, like that's a lot of music that we just talked about that you can actually access pretty quickly. It it will sound, I think one more thing I want to say, and you were mentioning this before, it will sound a little rough at first. Um, like we've both been doing this for a long time, so it's going to sound like smoother when we play whatever, like just even just a simple like A and B pedal and, you know, like, 865 grip I mean it's still like it's basic stuff but like one of the things about the pedal steel that's different from something like the piano for example like if you sat down at the piano and you showed someone like here's how to play an F triad and they went and played an F triad it would sound not that different from the way like someone who had been doing it for a long time sounded on the pedal steel in the beginning it will sound like there will be like weird noises and just weird like slidey stuff that you don't understand. Like, I think accepting that as part of the process and kind of leaning into some of that yeah. is totally fine. Like, and is is cool. Like, just to, just be like, yeah, it's gonna be like a little weird and like kind of like, you know, like that's just what it is. The same thing if someone starts playing the fiddle, it's kind of scratchy. Like, it's just not gonna. You're not gonna sound like a professional pedal steel player in the beginning so don't even worry about it <laughs> like think that you should or something it's like a mistake to to have that as an expectation you want to you want to feel free to just like be a beginner and be an explorer and i think that's like going to kind of set you in in a better in in a better position in in a better you know like that attitude i think is going to be better yeah, and we me and Rich spoke before about like there there are resources for pick blocking and palm blocking and muting strings and technique and feet and I'm sure Rich even has a lot of that on there. And we just really wanted to give you a framework for how to like musically start to explore. So there are other things, but we didn't want to overload you with like, oh, here's how you hold the picks, here's this, here's that, here's this shape. Yeah. It's just more like this is how to start to understand music from a basic level on this thing. Yeah. I I think I think that's it. Um, I'm going to stop the video now just so we don't, like, I don't talk for another 20 minutes, like, by accident, which seems, like, totally plausible. Um, so uh, thank you so much, Drew, and thanks, everyone, for um, for listening. Uh, this was super, I think this is really enlightening, and I hope people find it useful. Um, so here, I'm going to stop the recording.